This clip is brought to you by SaveWithConrad.com. Hey, this is Kurt Angle, and welcome to the Kurt Angle Show. We have an excellent show planned for you today. We'll be covering the death of my friend, mentor, and coach, Dave Schultz, and the impact he had on my amateur wrestling career. We will also be covering Team Foxcatcher. But first, I would like to introduce to all of you my co-host. You know him as the mortgage maestro, Conrad Thompson. How you doing, Conrad? <laughs> I'm good, dude. I'm excited to be here with you. I have uh, really wanted to sort of pick your brain about this topic because I'm always interested in folks' sort of origin stories and nearly as successful had you not met uh, David along the way, right? Oh, without a doubt. Dave had a lot to do with my success in my amateur wrestling career. I, I met him back in, geez, 1988. I think I was a freshman in college. I just won the ESPA national championships. That's the under 20 years of age national championships. You have to be a teenager to compete in it. So we were, I qualified for the ESPA world championships. We had a training camp at Northwestern University. And Dave was one of the celebrity um, technicians. And we hit it off right away. And we got along very well. He saw something in me that nobody else saw. And because I qualified for the ESPA world team, um, I also qualified to go to the USA Wrestling Olympic camps. So I would see Dave there quite a bit, and he would work with, you know, on the technique with me and teach me a lot of stuff. He was an incredible instructor. I think a lot of our listeners probably only know of his story from the, uh, you know, the ESPN 30 for 30 or the Netflix documentary or the, the 2014 film about Foxcatcher, and I feel like more of that was probably focused on DuPont than, than David, and I want to, man, let's talk about David a little bit. Tell us about who he was, the man, the person, the wrestler, the, the, the amateur wrestler, and I guess we should also mention, because we have obviously only wrestling fans listening to this, but primarily pro wrestling. We're not talking about Dr. D, the guy who slapped John Stossel. We're talking about the Olympic badass, right? Yes, Dave was an incredible wrestler. He was one of the absolute best of all time. He was a very happily married man, a proud father, great dad to his kids, and a great brother to Mark. He was just uh, an incredible human being that was always positive. He, he never looked at anything from a negative light. He was always positive, and he always wanted to learn. That's the one thing about Dave. He told me this. He said, you can never stop learning. And he didn't. He learned eight different languages uh, from all over the world. So he could learn technique from all the best wrestlers in the world from different countries. That's how complex Dave was. He, he mastered technique and he was the best at it. I want to briefly talk about some of his uh, amateur accomplishments, of course. I think he won the California State Athletic Championship, uh, the California State Championship, like, two weight classes higher than his normal division and had what I've read to be the most successful senior year in high school wrestling history in America. What made his high school senior year so special and stand out? Well, Dave didn't start wrestling till eighth grade. So wow. he didn't have a lot of experience. He, his senior year in high school, he was only in his fifth year wrestling and, you know, to dominate two weight classes above, and pin everybody in the tournament until the finals. I think he won 12 to one in the finals. That's a hugely dominant, you know, senior year. And not only that, he competed in open tournaments. He would go where NCAA champions were and the former Olympians were, and he would beat these guys, even wow. in high school. That's how good he was. He just, and he just kept getting better after that. I've read that uh, he becomes a three-time NCAA All-American, first at Oklahoma State and then twice at the University of Oklahoma. Did you ever talk to Jr. about David? Was he on his radar? Oh, yeah. Jr. was a big fan of Dave Schultz. I mean, he did go to Oklahoma, and you know, Jr. loves Oklahoma. But, um, yeah, Jr. talked very highly of him. I, I think Jr. met him uh, once early in the early 90s, and uh, he said that Dave was a great guy. and. He, he was. He was the absolute best. Yeah. How about this for a record? When he's at uh, Oklahoma State University, 
He's uh, 30 and four. And then at the university of Oklahoma, he's 61 and four. So his collegiate record is 91 and eight. This is like a real life Goldberg, right? Kurt. Oh, without a doubt. He was a Goldberg. He was so dominant. And what made him dominant was he always learned new techniques and he, he, he used, um, his strength was not weightlifting strength. He was really strong, like wiry strength, like old man strength, you know, <laughs> it was crazy because he never lifted weights. And the guy was so damn strong. When I first wrestled him the first time I did, I was 220 pounds. And Dave was about 168. So I weighed about 50 pounds heavier than him. And he beat the crap out of me. It's in technique and, you know, um, uh, leverage. He was very good at leverage. That's what made him so strong. But uh, he would grab your arm and you feel like he was going to rip it off. If he clinched you in a gut wrench, you were he was going to knock the wind out of you. He was just the strongest guy I've ever uh, wrestled, especially at that weight class. Are you paying attention to uh, what's happening on the national stage? I know you're like uh, in 87, I think you were a senior winning state wrestling championships yourself, but he won a world championship internationally in 83. He wins a, a, a gold medal in 84 in the Olympics. Are you keeping up with all of that as a young man? Yes, I was wrestling at the time. I was, uh, I think I was in eighth grade and Dave and Mark Schultz were my idols. They were the guys that, I started watching film and wanting to be portray them exactly like them, them and the Bannock brothers, Bruce Baumgartner, uh, Randy Lewis. There are a lot of great uh, athletes on that Olympic team. And they, it was the most successful Olympic team we had. Of course, it wasn't a fully contested Olympics. You know, some countries didn't participate that year, but it was the most dominant year we've ever had. And the Schultz brothers were number one on my list as my idols. Again, I don't know nearly enough about their story. I only know what I've seen in the movie and all that stuff, but it almost feels as if they present the story as if there was some maybe competitive friction between the brothers, David and Mark. Would you agree with that? Nothing that brothers don't normally do. I mean, they would bicker and argue, but it wouldn't be over anything big, but you know, they were brothers and they, they competed train together and you know they were together all the time but i think that the documentary painted a picture that they wanted to show more drama between the two but no dave absolutely loved mark and he always took care of him and uh, they were very close there was no problem between the two hey hey it's conrad thompson thanks for checking out the podcast here on youtube be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell so you get a notice anytime we upload some new content and go save yourself some money right now if you're in a 30-year loan or you have credit card debt it's not a matter of if i can save you money it's a matter of how much find out right now for free at savewithconrad.com